Hi guys, Mo Volans back with another mixing quick tip here. Uh, this is one of a part of a series, not necessarily with the same project, but a series of mixing and mastering quick tips that I'm going to bring to you in video form. And this one concentrates on the bass. We've just looked at the kick drum, well, depending on how long ago you watched the first quick tip, but that concentrated on the kick and I looked at a multiband uh, sort of side chain, uh, sorry, parallel processing. And now we're going to look at a couple of tips rolled into one for the bass. The first one being um, layering. Now this is really, really simple stuff. So the first tip in the two is quite simple. And the second one's a little bit more involved. Um, so layering, really, really simple. I've just copied the MIDI part. Um, the original bass being this, just a progressive bass part. You can hear it's just rolling in the background. And the second bass part is ex an exact copy um, on a sine wave. So there's the sine wave copy underneath a fuller, more uh, sort of dynamic bass. And the two together make a nice full tone. So that's the first tip. And if you don't do that, um, you should really start trying it. It's, I mean, it, most people do this. If you're a beginner, give it a go. Sine wave under your, under your bass, maybe an octave below, lots of top end rolled off. Very, very simple, quick tip for creating more low end. Much better than adding EQ, I might add. Um, you get a much uh, fuller, more direct sound. Um, next up, this is slightly more involved. The bass was interfering with the kick a little bit, especially after adding the, the multi-band parallel process in there and it being a reasonably full mix. So what I did was feed them all into a bus and add some sidechain compression. Now, this is pretty standard stuff. Let me just reset it there to a, an area that's not got lots going on. The difference here is that I'm using frequency dependent side chaining. Now, don't let this scare you. And you know, obviously, you could just feed a kick into it and you don't have to worry about all this. You can feed a kick in as your, your side chain key input and boom, you're finished. Um, you just need to set the release correctly and the attack correctly uh, and you know, make sure you've got the right amount of gain reduction. But let's say you're using an entire drum loop as your key input. If this happens and you, this is what the route you decide to take, it's quite likely you're going to have kicks and snares in there that might interfere with the amount of gain reduction you're getting. And if this is the case, you really want to focus in on the low end, the, just the kick drum. And if you to do that, you're going to need a compressor that has a sidechain filter um, and or frequency dependent settings. And you can see here in the Logic stock, we just switch it on, we turn it to low pass, and we dial down the frequency to say 200 or 180 so we're just getting that kick and you can see here it's just reducing when the kick's happening and if I dial it right in you can hear the bass being completely reduced in those sections I only want to add two or three decibels of gain reduction just to bring the bass back enough when the kick's firing just so it's beating a path through this sort of reasonably full mix and then you can turn it up a bit. And yeah, we don't want too much pumping. But if we take off this frequency dependent side chaining, you're gonna find that you get reduction on the whole loop. And that's not what we want. And this is coming from bus two, which is our drum bus. So you're gonna get reduction on the snare, the hats, the percussion and everything else. So really, this low pass filter focuses right in on the kick drum and make sure you're just getting a reduction when the kick happens. You can do this with high end, mid range, you can do it with a snare. You can even make a de uh, uh, using this sort of uh, setup. You know, obviously if you just want to cut a certain part of the vocal, you can home in on that with a high pass filter. And uh, there you go. So frequency dependent side chaining on bass mixed with uh, a little bit of layering and we're adding more control, more low end, and the ability to push it higher in the mix without disturbing other mix elements. So two quick tips in this mix alone. Obviously there was plenty more other stuff that I did. I'll hopefully cover some of that in this project, uh, but maybe move on to another project and give you two similar quick tips next time around. Cheers.